Good morning and welcome everyone. Kevin Carpenter, volunteer at CPPCon. We're getting closer and closer. And this morning's exciting for me because Anthony Williams is joining us. And I've never got to speak with Anthony Williams. Um, I, my claim to fame of knowing you is concurrency in action. And so, you know, it was the start of my ability to do threading, which I greatly appreciate. But for anyone else who doesn't know you, Anthony, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, so uh, as Kevin says, I'm the author of C++ Concurrency in Action, um, which came out just in time for the uh, C++ 11 standard. And, and yeah, that, and for a lot of people, that's how they know my name. Um, but I've been I've been to presenting at conferences since the early 2000s you know, on various aspects of C++. And uh, at one point, I was the developer for the maintainer for Boost Threads. And uh, though I don't do that anymore, uh, I didn't have the time, so I handed that off to somebody else. Um, uh, at the moment, I work for Waven Planet developing automotive software. Oh, right on. So I, I kind of have a little funny story about concurrency in action because at one point, Pack Publishing came to me and asked me if I wanted to do a concurrency book. And, you know, I was, I was entertaining the idea, but then I went back through and read your book again and I'm like, yeah, no, there's nothing I'm going to be able to add that hasn't already been covered. <laughs> I, I, I give a lot of props for, for people that can write, you know, especially creating classes and, and things like that, because that takes, it takes a, I think a special skill, like, you know, teachers in some ways don't get enough credit for how hard it can be to teach different people, you know, in different modalities and, and things of that nature. And, you know, to that point, that's kind of why we're chatting this morning, because you got a academy class coming up at CPPCon this year, um, more concurrent thinking in C++ beyond the basics, right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. So how long have you, you know, I want to say I thought I saw that you taught this class in 2020 online, but you've been teaching this content for a while, haven't you? I have, yes. I and mean, the, the course continues to evolve. So this year it is, you know, there are new parts and, and revised parts to, to make sure that it's fully up to date with everything else that's happening and to fix any bugs that leaked in in the previous parts. But uh, yeah, I know, I've been teaching this course on and off you know, in, in various incarnations for the last five or six years, you know, both at conferences and as you know, to private companies. And I, you know, you were mentioning what you end up doing for work. And then I also, you have the threading library that I think you've also worked on as well. So you've been, I mean, you've been doing this for years. Yes. I mean, I, I know, to be to be fair, then you know, concurrency was one of the things that I picked up as an interest back when I first started as a developer, so you twenty know, something years ago. Um, and at the time, then P threads was all there was, so that's what I learned. I then you know, worked on boost threads when there, there was an opportunity arose, and that evolved into standardized threads. And oh, see, though Howard did the heavy lifting for that, then uh, I I helped out a little bit with the the standard papers for that, and um, that evolved into a book. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, yeah, having actually implementing it so that people could use it, you know, that was my thread library, which, to be fair, is now pretty redundant because most of the major compilers in the versions that anybody actually uses now do provide their thread library. I, mean, I think there's a few people who are stuck on you know, GCC4 or something because, yeah, you know, whatever reason, but they probably don't need threading anyway these days. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so with the class, is it really, do you do a lot of hands-on work? Is this a class where I, you know, I would definitely be bringing my laptop because we're doing, you know, writing and trying things out as well as theory and. Yeah. I mean, so it, it's a mix. I mean, um, most of the, of the actual time spent is you know, me talking and explaining and you know, demonstrating things up on, up on the projector. But there's a fair chunk of you know, setting you, setting the workshop attendees, ta you know, tasks to, you know, to work on so that they can you know, submit their understanding and see why something has to be like like that or, or whatever, and to actually think around the issues you know, that are that are involved in in, you know, thinking about concurrent code. That's awesome. And I guess another thing I was wondering is, you know, are you excited to be back to? 
doing it in an on-site versus, you know, some of the people I've talked to, because the last time I did these talks was 2020. I'd missed last year. And, you know, on that year, everybody was doing online and, and I think everybody did their best to, to make it work well. And, you know, I know there's some trainers that really thrive online, but I like being yeah. able to be in a room. So I'm like, are you excited about being back on site? Yes. I think you know, my teaching style tends to work better. I mean, in person than it than, than online um i i've done a few i've done this course over uh, online and split it over three days rather than two and things like that and it has worked and i think the attendees have got value out of it but um it is harder as a as a trainer it's harder to see whether people are understanding what you're teaching when all you've got is a you know a little box on the screen with a face um and Sometimes not even that because some people don't like having their cameras on or they don't have the bandwidth to have cameras on. And so, yeah, it, I think the class works better in person. And so, yes, on that front, I'm quite excited to be back teaching in person. So, you know, little CPPCon, I guess, going more history stuff, just as a side question. Um, is this your first time going to Denver? I know you were in at Meidenbauer in Seattle. Um, but we'll no, just... it's, it's, it's the second time I've been to Denver. Okay. We came came in 2019, which I think was the first time it was in Denver. Ah, that's uh, right. Yes, it is. It is. Because um, I started volunteering, I want to say, 17, 17, 18. Um, but yeah, we, you know, I remember the last year at the Meidenbauer, it was just packed, you know, people elbow to elbow. And, and I know that compared to last year, we definitely have a lot more on-site attendees this year than we did, which I'm excited just to see everyone, you know, coming back. Um, so you also have a talk you're giving this year, right? That's right. Yes. I mean, I'm doing a talk on an introduction to C++20 concurrency. I think the title's possibly slightly different to that, but uh, that's what that's what the topic is. Um, where, where essentially, I'm just going through you know, what's in the C++ 20 thread library. If you're starting now, which lots of people are, they're picking up um, multi-threading for the first time in C++ right now, and they want to do a project, what do you need to know? Um, obviously, it's only an hour plus questions, so it doesn't cover anything in detail. Um, no. If you really want the detail, come to my workshop. But you know, uh, alternatively, yeah, you know, then yeah, seek out online documentation, look in my book, you know, whatever. But yes, this will be a, an overview of what you need to know if you're starting now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, to, to that point about your class too, your class is a pre-class, correct? That's right, yes. So anybody that's interested in getting really good with concurrency, Anthony is probably the person that you want to take a class from. Uh, I, I have no doubt about that. Um, I'll be there early. So I'm hoping to at least swing in and say hi during the class because um, it's great meeting you and, and getting a chance to talk with you. Um, and I can't wait to see how you teach too. So uh, I look forward to seeing you in Denver here in, in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to being there. And I, yeah, looking forward to meeting you again and, and to meeting every, everyone else who can be who can make it to Denver. That's perfect. Thank you for your time this morning, Anthony. Well, I say this morning, but thank you for your time today. <laughs> yes, thank you again. We'll talk more soon.